and next we have Jamie. Jamie, who um, is a spoken word poet, who uh, was just, maybe she'll say a little bit about where she was last weekend at the yeah, spoken yeah. word. Yeah, that'd be great if you tell us. Okay, Jamie. So I'm freshly back from Saskatoon at the Canadian Festival of Spoken Word. Uh, and my teammate back there, Sam, was also there, but she's probably not going to share because she is, well, yeah. Uh, it was good fun, lots of poetry, lots of good poets. And now I'm going to share some stuff that doesn't really fit into the slam scene, I find. Like, one is too short and probably too deep, and then one is kind of too long and too casual. So there's a very, there's a very uh, specific type of slam poetry that goes well, so I'll do this instead. It's called uh, Rest in Parenthesis. You are gone now, but if I had the chance to wish one thing of you, it is this. May you rest in parenthesis. Only an aside in the monologue of life, a soliloquy to the fourth wall of dramatic irony. A bracketed prologue to your story, interjecting an understanding of now and everything from now, in a seemingly never-ending pattern as present becomes past and enters the parenthesis. When your death came, and your last words and thoughts slipped behind you, death was the only thing left unsheltered. As your brackets came to a close, but may you rest in every moment in memory you contained an interjection thus far. May you rest. In parenthesis. So that's that one. This one's a little more casual, a bit silly. It's about being a writer growing up like that. If I were a bunny, I would have long floppy ears, a wagging tail, and sloppy kisses. Wait a minute. Long floppy ears, a wagging tail, sloppy kisses. If I were a bunny, I'd be a dog. That was my first poem. <laughs> my first grade teacher was so pleased with this obvious literary phenomenon that she told me I had the chaps to be a writer. This was a turning point for me as I had always lived my entire life believing that I would be a cat doctor or a professional cuddler of cats or perhaps a cat in general but a writer. Now that could open some doors. So from the time my mother first hung that confusing poem on the refrigerator, I started demolishing those doors with an axe and a Jack Nicholson smile stretching across my face to the horror and discomfort of those around me. My poor parents. Nobody warned them about how to raise a writer. Until now. This is what to expect when expecting your child might be a writer. One, you can tell a 10-year-old anything, and chances are, they will believe you. So when you are told that when they are told they could be a writer, it's likely they'll refuse to do math, since Robert Munch only needs to count to ten at most to be a best-selling author. Two, once the seed is planted, there is no going back. You'll be forced to read stories about cats all the time, superhero cats, cats in love, cats going for a sunny walk, and absolutely nothing happens. Cats contemplating existentialism, and they will cover every surface of your home, forcing you to give up your dreams of interior decor and start referring to the state of your home as lived in. Three. You'll wish your kid was a simpleton with a passion for macaroni art and eating crayons when they start writing letters to Santa and iambic pentameter expressly requesting for J.K. Rowling's hand in marriage for Christmas. Four, it's actually pretty likely they'll flunk math. On the bright side, Robert Munch only has to count to ten to be a best-selling author. Five, your expectations of having a doctor in the family will go straight out the window. Your once go-lucky child will tell you in the chapters at the age of twelve that to them, there is no God, only death. Then, as a sucker punch, they'll come out as kind of gay, but you probably should have clued in when they said they wanted to marry J.K. Rowling. But worse is the day when they proclaim themselves a poet. They'll assure you that they won $5 at a poetry slam one time, which Dr. Phil, Dr. House, and McDreamy will likely never live up to. Six, Einstein wasn't built in one day. Your suffering from confused dog bunny poems and cat stories will likely get worse before it gets better, mostly in the form of Twilight fan fiction. Seven, you've spent years living vicariously through your child. Why stop now? Eight, there will be ups and there will be downs. 
waves of writer's block, knocking down walls, emotions bursting in places other than on paper as creative minds are their own curse. Because typically, all that brain power comes out in smart-ass remarks far more often than literary genius. Nine, just listen. Ten, when your child tells you they want to be a writer, grinning wide with the shittiest poem you've ever read about a confused dog, forfeit your pencils. Forfeit your paper and forfeit all expectations because you're in, a ride, you're in for a ride much longer than childhood. Because this is no phase. It's a lifestyle, mom. But most of all, the only real thing left to expect when expecting your child might be a writer is to expect the worst. But always hope for the best. Mm. Woo! another glass of that wine? Yes, you nice. can. Okay. Hey, Jamie, thank you. Thank you.